And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, Tom Vassell here. And this week on the Dice Tower channel, we got four people who are doing a four square review of Marvel Dice Throne. I'm not in that review, but I love the game. I love Dice Throne, I love Marvel Dice Throne. This, this video here, I wanna take a look at the eight characters. We got a small set here, Black Panther and Captain Marvel. We got another small set here, Black Widow, Doctor Strange, and then the large four box set, Scarlet Witch, Thor, Loki, and Spider-Man. So there are eight different characters. This video is just gonna be a video that shows you the different characters, my thoughts on them, kind of giving you an overview, just in case you're gonna get one box only, which one to get, here we go. All right, we're gonna start with the four characters in the main box here, Scarlet Witch, Thor, Loki, and Miles Morales, Spider-Man, and take a look, here we go. Thor is one of the easiest characters to play. He is a tank here. So there's a couple things about Thor. Um, he has a very nice defensive ability where if he rolls this symbol, the worthy symbol, which is on two sides of the die, for each one that he rolls, he blocks two damage. So he's kind of hard to hit. But he also has Mjolnir here, this hammer, which he's throwing around. Many of these abilities and things that you have are going to let you throw the hammer or retrieve the hammer. When you throw the hammer, hit somebody else, and it's going to do one undefendable damage to that character. When you retrieve it, you get one of these Electrokinesis tokens. And you can collect these. You can spend three to draw a card, but usually you want to save them to add damage to your attack, like this bottle lightning. Of course, that bottle lightning can get even more powerful. Just a lot of fun to do things like that. Also, if you manage to throw the thing around, like here, if you throw Mjolnir twice a turn, you get a bunch of stuff. Here, you get you can retrieve it. Here, you get this Electrokinesis. So, Thor has a lot of, he's throwing a hammer around. It doesn't do a ton of damage, but it's fun to do. He also has Guard Break, which is great because you can use this to make your attack become undefendable on a one through three. And that, that plus the hammer, but he's not a complicated character to play. He's just going to go around and hit people pretty hard. At the same time, he's able to take a good amount of damage. His evil brother Loki is probably my second favorite of all the characters from this set, just because of his antics here. First of all, he has Spellbound. When you play one of these tokens on your opponent, you cover up the name of one of their offensive abilities, which they cannot then use. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it goes away after a round. But even more annoying or cool are these illusion tokens. So when you hit Loki, he can spend an illusion token to make you draw one of these three illusion cards. So one of them, the best one for, for you anyway, hey, he blocks all the damage. There's also a partial success where you take only half damage um, and then you could spend another illusion again or you don't prevent any of the damage, but the attacker does get a bag of tricks and you can try to go again, but still, the fact that this is here means you have a one-third chance of taking no damage, which is a lot of fun. Bag of tricks themselves are very entertaining to play on people because you put it on someone else, they're going to roll a die, they could lose a tactics point, but otherwise you can make them heal or do damage, which means they can be useful when you're playing with them on a team and stuff here. And so, yeah, he also has a bunch of fun cards to play here. You can do three Spellbound. Loki into my... That's a terrible pun. But anyhow, lots of cool things. Loki's all about annoying your opponent. He's not particularly strong on the defensive side of things, except for the illusion, right? You could take no damage. So he could get hammered with bad luck, and I've seen it happen. But he's just so much fun to play. Scarlet Witch is kind of a jack-of-all-trades here. If you like randomness, then she's kind of the person for you. I mean... Her, she has chaos magic, and that's kind of really well-defined here. And, for example, on her defense here, she rolls five dice, and if she gets a pair, she can get crackle, probability manipulation, conjure, do four damage to the opponent. You kind of don't know what's going to happen with her. Probability manipulation is kind of cool. These are tokens that let you add or subtract one from dice that are even. It's not as powerful as you might think because... 
uh, you know, it's not going to, you can't make all sixes. You can't get sealed to your fate because you can't change fives with it. But it's still a lot of fun. Reality Warp is an annoying one. You give your opponent, if your opponent has one of those, they take one of your dice instead of one of theirs. So they're rolling four of their dice and one of yours, which is not particularly useful, uh, except maybe you can get a small or large straight out of it. Other than that, your opponent's going to be pretty annoyed about it. Um, Conjure lets you get someone else's positive status effect. I ah, can't hate that, right? And then Crackle does extra damage to people. So again, she's kind of all over the place, which is fun. You know, if you want to play someone who does a whole lot of cool different things, but a little bit randomly, this is the character for you. Miles Morales Spider-Man is fun to play if you like a pretty good defense and some fun offense. The fun offense comes from the combo, the combo tokens here. And you can spend one of those at the end of your turn to make another attack. You can only do it once per turn. That would get ridiculous otherwise. But that's fun to be able to attack someone twice. Also, you can use webbing to make your attacks undefendable. His big thing here is, like I said, he has defense. He has two defenses. You can use Counter Punch, which lets you hit the other person back, or on Spider Sense, prevent half the damage, and you get this invisibility token on, from certain things, and you can discard that to get another roll, uh, but invisibility can always be spent to roll defensive dice against an undefendable attack. That's fantastic. And you have a card that makes your defensive roll better. He has also some very basic cards. Cha-ching! Milkshake me, which lets you heal. Get a combo token and the very strong Booyah card. So there's a lot of fun. Uh, he's kind of just a fun character to play. He'll probably accelerate a battle um, on his end because he gets to do attack after attack after attack. But the defensive abilities of him aren't bad either. A nice rounded character. An easier one to play. All right, now we'll take a look here at the smaller boxes. We have Cat Marvel and Black Panther and Black Widow versus Doctor Strange. Um, I like this box better than this one, but all the characters are fun. Let's take a look. Captain Marvel's another easy character to play, unless you are distracted by very bright yellow, because that's all over the spot. She is a very powerful character. Not necessarily a glass cannon, um, because she has some very strong defense here, but her attacks are just immense. She has the Cosmic Flares, which does one damage to all opponents, uh, which in a multiplayer game is pretty handy. Radiance Tokens, which you let you change the value of any die to a six, which let that binary blast get attacked. And then the Cosmic Ray, which lets you spend, roll two dice and add one of them to your attack. That just all adds up to her doing lots and lots of damage. I mean, she has a nice defensive here, Scintillate, where she can discard Radiance Tokens to prevent a lot of damage, and the Cosmic Shield, which helps prevent damage. But just her attacking people all the time with these powerful attacks is just absolutely fabulous if you just want to just really wail on your opponent. But if you really want to wail on your opponent, let's take a look at Black Panther. Black Panther is sort of a glass cannon because his defensive ability here just does damage back to your opponent. Now, yes, he can get the Vibranium Suit, which you can spend to prevent three damage, but Black Panther is all about just hurting your opponent. The main way is through this kinetic energy. You can have up to eight of these tokens, and he has a passive ability where anytime you get damage, he gets one of these tokens. For every two you have, you do one damage to the opponent for each attack, which can, since you can have up to eight, you can get up to three extra damage in all your attacks. You say, why not four? That's because when you get eight, you discard them all immediately. You get two tactics points, draw two cards, and do five damage to somebody. That's undefendable. That's crazy cool. He also has lots of special abilities here that do all sorts of things. So, again, he's all about the jump out on attacks. He even has a card. Make your attack become undefendable. Or strength of will. Roll five dice and add that much damage to your attack. Oh. Yeah, so if you just want to just wail on your opponent and try to kill them before you die, Black Panther's your person. Of all the characters in the set, Black Widow is my favorite. Now, there's two main reasons for that. Um, not to mention she has agility, which lets you spend that roll of die and take half damage. But that's not one of the reasons. She's a decent uh, defense thing here. The two reasons are these two. One, she has time bombs. These are great tokens. A lot of your abilities put a time bomb on your opponent. On their turn, they roll a die. If they roll a six, they defuse the time bomb. Anything else, it flips over. Next turn, same thing. If the time bomb goes off, 
which means they need to roll six one of two turns. They take four undefendable damage. They will hate you, and it is so much fun. But more importantly, she starts with three of these covert op tokens, and you can get more of them, and you can spend these tokens to put out ability upgrades from your hand, or to look at the top three cards of your deck to find ability upgrade tokens. She can play them out. Once she has five ability upgrades in play, she adds a damage to all her attacks. So if you're like me, and I bet a lot of you are, that you like putting out upgrades, she'll have more upgrades out faster than any other character in the game. And I love upgrading stuff. So Black Widow's upgrades, plus these time bombs, oh, I love it. Makes her one of my favorite characters. I've mentioned that uh, several of the characters are easier to play. Doctor Strange is not. He's not only the most complex character to play in Marvel Dice Throne, I think he's the most complex character to play in Dice Throne in general. And that's because he has this Book of Ashanti, and he starts with a spell in play, and he has a chance to get tons more spells. So he starts with his Flames, a Faulting, and his deck has a lot more of these spells in it. So you have the chance to prepare a spell on your turn. You put this spell here on top of this, and when you cast a spell, and there's various things that will let you cast a spell, the Astral Incursion, the Mystic Bolts, um, different things will let you cast a spell, you just do the spell. So this does one damage as an undefendable damage to a chosen opponent. Uh, when, that's when you prepare it. So when you prepare it, you do a damage, and then when you cast it, you add one to an attack, and then you put it back in your hand. Here's this one. A chosen player gets Deja Vu. That's a token that you have that they can use that. They have to, they basically spend it to conclude their offensive role and start a new offensive. Basically, you can redo. You can redo something if you don't like it. Bolts here. You do three as a source of undefendable damage to a chosen opponent. And there's all kinds of ones in here. I'm not going to go over each and every one of them. Make an attack undefendable. But it's kind of cool. You're playing. You can play one per turn. And then these different things will launch them. But very importantly here, um, Dr. Strange dice are different than most people. You'll notice that the sides here, there's two of one, two, two mandalas, two tomes, a mantle, and an amulet here, right? He doesn't have three of anything. And he doesn't have what a lot of other characters have, which is like a dump ability is what I call it. When there's nothing else to use, you use that. Like the mandalas here, the greens, you'll notice they're on a few abilities. The whites, the tomes are on this universal awareness, but you need four of them. He just doesn't have, he's not an easy character to play. When you play him, you need to be ready to just, you know, use all the things. Grab the spells, start playing the spells, using them. Try to pull the spells from your deck and put them out. He's a cool character. I really like him, but he is a little bit more complex than the rest to play. I have not yet mixed dice, Marvel Dice Throne with regular Dice Throne. I would like to try that out at some point, and maybe I'll rank all Dice Throne characters at some point in time. I think that would be a fun thing to do. If I was only getting one, like I said, the small boxes and the large boxes, I mean, get them all, but... Um, this one's the easiest one to play. You got Black Widow and Captain Marvel. This is just a straight up attack each other. Um, in that particular matchup, Captain Marvel seems to have a slight edge, I think, because they're both doing a lot of damage. But that just might be me. They're, they're very fun to play. But this one's my favorite, Black Widow and Doctor Strange. They're also a weird matchup for me because they their abilities are kind of different. Like Black Widow goes up against a tank. Doctor Strange is doing all kinds of weird things. This is the most complex of them, although they're very, very fun characters to play. And then, of course, this box. If you're only going to get one, this is the one to get, right? It has four, and like I would say that Thor's easiest to play, then Spider-Man, then Loki, then Scarlet Witch, but they're all fun. Get them all. I mean, really. Um, but hopefully this gives you an idea of how the characters play. It is an amazing game, just as good as the original Dice Drum. Well, better probably, because, hey, there's Marvel stuff, and the artwork in this stuff is phenomenal. So that's Marvel Dice Throne. I'm Tom Vassell. Thanks for watching.